Hey everybody, it's Bob with Trade Genius. I got my good friend Phil here with me. Remember the old adage, history rhymes, but it's going to be worse this time. Stay tuned. Trade Genius. Hey guys, I'll tell you something that we do that really will change the way in which you look at trading and also absolutely help you increase your profitability and how much money you make. It's the Trade Genius newsletter. We put the newsletter out Sunday night through Thursday night, and this really looks at the plumbing of the markets and helps prepare you for the next trading day and help you make money. And, and we give you a lot of information. We give you market statistics. We give you market levels. We give you the seasonality, what's happening with different sectors of the market, and we will help you identify whether the market's in a bear mode or a bull mode, or whether it's euphoric, whether it's despondent, and it just puts you in a position to be on the right side of the trade. So Take advantage of our offer that we have below and you'll love it. I mean, one trade that you make with this thing could pay for definitely a month, maybe even a year's worth of service. It's that powerful. Use promo code podcast for 15% off the retail price of newsletter. Thanks for listening. Okay, Phil. In 2008, we had a bank crisis that turned into a full-on crash by September. Yep. 2023, we had a bank crisis. Yeah. And OMG, we are setting up for a September to remember. Fill us in. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, look at the headlines here from yesterday. It was S&P downgrades and multiple U.S. banks citing tough operating conditions so you know it's like here we go again and you know i think oftentimes you'll find that credit events will happen in march and toward the end of the you know going into q4 typically why that is i'm not sure it just that seems to be the schedule and so here we are again now banks are faltering and it's not looking good so if we take a look at specifically this one bank right bob is um schwab now schwab is in trouble because they owe 130 percent of their total equity capital this is the bank not the brokerage the, the schwab bank owes 130 percent of their total equity capital to short duration fhlb loans that have to be paid back soon and that is federal home loan banks which the federal government assigns uh, i think it's 11 regional banks to dole out federal home loans. And so Schwab went to them and got loans. I don't, I'm not exactly sure why Schwab went to them with short duration FHLB loans. That'll have to come out in the wash, but the situation is such that it's an issue and they have to come up with some capital real quick. Uh, so anyways, th this is a situation where we'll have to keep an eye on it because uh, if they are in trouble, they can't pay back these loans, then we do have a Lehman situation, right? Because Bear Stearns happened in March of 2008 and then Lehman crashed in uh, September of 08 and they didn't bail uh, Lehman out. And th this time I think obviously would be a little different in that regard, Bobby, because you know back then they didn't realize the systemic risks. Now, you know, they're very aware of that stuff, but it would be, it's going to create problems and shockwaves if Schwab does falter and, and potentially gets into financial trouble. And, you know, it's like, well, how are they really in trouble? Well, you know, if you look at what came out yesterday too, Schwab is starting to lay off employees and starting to close down some of its offices in order to cut costs. So there's some definite concern there. I mean, Schwab's a big company, been around a long time. For them to be cutting costs, closing offices, Bob, I think is a smoking gun, so to speak. Yeah, it's pretty scary you know i did a little um you know poking around on here they i think they did what everybody else did they tried to cheat right so they they got the cheapest amount of money a uh, rate of money they could get and then they got caught with their hand in the cookie jar and they were afraid to roll up their debt because it would affect their short-term profits would affect their stock price now they're in a situation where i don't know how bad it is but they're, they're probably gonna have to um they're probably gonna have to dilute their shares now to bring this this, this loan book back in balance fill, which is not good news. I'll make one other thing clear too. I'm a little nervous about this because my family, all our stuff is with Schwab. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I'm poking around on this thing too, but there is Schwab the brokerage and there's Schwab the bank. Right. So, you know, so you have different exposures there. And as long as Schwab, the broker, didn't get themselves caught upside down, then really it's the bank that we have to kind of keep an eye on. But it'll affect the entire company's stock price. Speaking of stock prices of banks, uh, one other thing, too, that stands out to us is the just the basically the performance of financials. So if we switch over to this chart here, we've got uh, four quadrants here. The upper left is the dot com bust. And so the uh, S&P 500 is the candlesticks there and that orange line is the 
XLF ETF, which is your, you know, your fine ETF for financials and banks. So the point being is that usually if we're really coming out of a bottom, then you're going to see the financials performing well right along with stock. So the dot com bust you can see up there, we bottomed and, you know, the financials were leading the charge uh, in the upper right corner there, the great financial crisis, we bottomed and financials were right there rebounding with stocks. And as stocks made higher highs, so did the financials. Uh, COVID was, you know, a quick dip, but again, financials recovered along with stocks. Now, if you look over in the lower left quadrant in our current situation, we have a basically what we've had so far is a pullback, right? You can argue, you know, whether or not we're, this is the start of a bear market or if it was just a pullback and now we're failing to make a higher high in the stock market and now rolling into a bear market, which I think is probably the way this will be described as we look back in time. But you'll notice, even though the stock market made a higher high coming off the lows in the context of, you know, a bounce, the financials didn't, right? This current move up did not make a new high over that previous swing high that we see there uh, at the beginning of the year. So, so this is a problem because they're not confirming the stock market move. And in fact, financials are rolling over and they've been taking a beating in the last couple of trading sessions. So this to me is a big red flag here, Bob. And on top of that, we look at the financial conditions, right? Financial conditions is basically, if you have tight financial conditions, then your stock market is at risk of pulling back or deteriorating. And here we're at an index of our uh, US financial condition index. It's at 100. Last time we were there was in uh, May. That was about well, I don't think about 400 points lower than where we are now. So in terms of the conditions under the hood, the stock market is quite a bit disconnected here. And I think we have, you know, we have a lot of air under us, Bob, given what's going on. If this wasn't reading 100, I could say, okay, well, you know, we have some breathing room. But this tells us that we should be right back at where we were trading back in April, May. Yeah, this is... um Pretty scary. And, you, and you're right. There's something about March and September that because I remember I used to trade the volatility and those were the two best months. And so, yeah. yeah and then, you know, coming into September third quarter, um, it's going to be the options are going to get pretty scary, too. So, look, our, our point on this, guys, is that no new bull markets coming. And with the real estate housing market starting to lock up and the auto market starting to lock up, these are two big employers, two big uh, factors in GDP. And uh and I can't see us not getting into a recession here. And, and this is going to put even more pressure on the banks because of the what's happening with, with people's ability to pay these loans back. Schwab's not the only one in trouble, Phil. You know, everybody and their brothers is starting to have trouble paying back all their loans. And I think it's going to get it's going to get really, really ugly, really, really fast. You know, the other thing, too, Bob, with, um, you know, the, the housing market is at a standoff. And we were talking about that today in the room. And you had mentioned how it's no longer with these interest rate. You know, we're going to 8% on, on more, new mortgages now. And they're saying that it could even go up beyond that. And I always said that don't be surprised if we see 10%, which sounded kind of kind of crazy. But I thought given what the um, Fed was trying to accomplish, that could be possible, especially if they pulled away from mortgage backed securities, right? Because they're artificially floating that market. But if they pull away from that market, then um, what happens, it's a lot like when bonds uh, lose their face value, the yields go up. And so the right. same thing happens there. Uh, and you can track that via the MBB ETF, which is the mortgage backed security ETF. And as that thing drops, the mortgage rates go up. And that's why we said, I thought, you know, 10% was within reach. And so the point being is that you mentioned that now with 20% down, it doesn't make fiscal sense. You're better off renting, waiting for the spread to close. And then I thought if that's the case, okay, it is the case really. But now if, if that starts to catch uh, momentum and then you have a bunch of people saying, screw buying, I'm just going, unless they're cash buyers, screw it, I'm going to rent. Now you've got people that have these homes that are going to be forced to rent, but are they able to cover their nut? And, you know, we, we've seen metrics where the rental month over month, uh, that demand is starting to soften and rental prices are starting to soften. So you wonder, you know, as the consumer gets weak and they can't afford asking rents and then, you know, these landlords are going to have to lower their rents at some point, then there, there becomes our catalyst for you know, where we had this standoff where people don't want to sell and people don't want to buy. Well, the buyers have no incentive here, but the sellers might start getting a lot of incentive, especially if some of these second and third homes that they own are unable to cash flow. Yeah. And let me give you some perspective on this. So a 20% loan, a uh, 20% down loan, 30 years, you're paying 100% 
of your payments against your equity. Meaning if you have a $500,000 loan, you're, you're going to be paying out um, $1.1 million, <laughs> $1.1 million over the 30 year period. It makes no sense at all. But it's not just that. Look, we own a condo free and clear. Our cap rate has dropped to 3.8% and mm-hmm. we get premium pricing for our rent, but the costs are starting to balloon fill. Mm-hmm. And, and you know, if you, you know, you go into a situation here where, you know, you can sell the condo and stick it in a T-bill and you're, you're doing better with no risk, market risk. Right, right. So I, right. I think people are just just crazy. And you know what? And and um, and I think a lot of people are not in that same situation. A lot of people, and we know we talked about this before, you know, they daisy chain these loans. They use sure. equity from inflated equity from an old property to get into a new property. Mm-hmm. Well, daisy chains work in reverse too. They're called dominoes. Yep. And so I think we're going to see that domino effect. That's why I am watching like a hawk to get an e- Airbnb short. I just want to give myself enough time to let this thing play out because I think Airbnb is going to probably ex- implode here over the fourth quarter. Yeah, it's the old collateral game, right? It's you can leverage a lot when your collateral is worth a lot, but in, in collateral starts going backwards, then your loan to value, your LTV ratio uh, suffers, and then the banks call loans. And I've, I've dealt yep. with that in the construction industry. I've had a project where the bank came in, and it was because of the 08 debacle, and all of the value of the properties started to get slashed. Even though you know we were in the process of uh, constructing one, which was a spec home, luxury spec home, and the bank came in and said we're calling loan. And then the developer guys that they had to go and scramble for more private money to. Try Try to, and they ended up doing it, but it was just, it was really, in fact, that project was on hold for a long time, you know, stopped dead in its track. So that's the kind of stuff that can happen. People don't think about that, but the, the LTVs suffer and banks start, you know, pulling all the loans because it's well, you know, a lot of the, the loan contracts have that language written into them. You know, the banks aren't stupid. Yep. And so they're going to cover their bases. So anyway, yeah. So that's yep. food for thought there. And that's all I had, Bob. Yeah. Hey guys, hit like, subscribe, check out our, our service, tradelikeageniuscom trade genius academy. Academy.com, tradegenius.co. You know, we're on top of this. So there are some great trades. I mean, we had some good trades yesterday when the market popped, kind of sat on our rear ends today, watching for tomorrow. NVIDIA's coming up on Thursday. And on Friday, we got PAL. So really, it's no time for heroes, but um, the market's still giving us some really good short swing trades. And so we just take advantage of what it's giving us. But September, you got to be really, really, really careful. A lot of things yep. are coming together here. And yep. I think it's going to be unpleasant for most people. Totally agree. All right, guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Take care. Trade Genius.